Uh, Alderman, thank you so much for giving us some of your time here. So this is breaking news. We're just learning now. The city is saying that it will push back the evictions from tomorrow, when they were supposed to start, now to Sunday. Doesn't really seem like that big of a difference. What is your reaction? Well, I think, first of all, is is a... Uh is really uh, shameful that we continue to see uh, bosses coming from uh, from Texas. It's, it's a shame that we're still waiting for the federal government uh, to do his job. I mean, I, I'm, I'm glad that we have a mayor who is uh, 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 doing everything they can in a really difficult situation. But the reality is in the, Chica the city of Chicago, just to give you an, 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 an idea, we have 80,000 people who are unhoused. Right. We have many people, especially in the black community, has been treated... Uh, so inhumanely in the previous administration, decades of this investment, we have 80,000 people in our house, 20,000 of there are CPS students. Now, we just received 36,000 uh, new neighbors. We're trying to do everything we can. The federal government has yet to spend a penny in our, in, in, in our city, yet they have billions of dollars to go bomb innocent children and women in the Middle East, economic sanctions in, uh, in South America and Central America that continue to drive people here. It is time to have common sense policy. We cannot continue to treat people, especially people in cities like Chicago, black and brown communities that need investment. President Biden has come here for us for votes. When is the time that we're going to be able to talk not only about public health? We are now putting protocols in place to get people vaccinated. That's what we need to do. Republicans continue to disseminate misinformation to stop vaccination. That is deadly. We need to make sure that we talk about common sense policies. I would I would say that this this whole thing about immigration it is is a shame that we continue to to criminalize people. We have put like the president went as far as giving one example, one example to criminalize and call people illegals, a whole community. I didn't see criminals. I see kids, I see right. families. And again, I would like to say just to add, what we need is to make sure that we have a federal government that invests in public health protocols, a state and local governments coordinated and not sabotaging each other. And we need to invest in housing. That's how we right. want to and, and there are a lot of cities that, that are wanting that, that federal help, want the federal government to step in. Let's focus on these evictions. Alderman, where will these migrants go? Will they be able to eventually return to shelters in the future? That is a great question. And that's what I'm, I'm saying on message. We went to the White House. And this is also for not to exonerate Republicans, neither re Democrats. Both are complicit in this. Both are anti-immigrant. We need to make sure that with those $5 billion that we went months ago to ask for the federal government to reach our community, we also need work permits so that people, just like Ukrainian refugees, 29,000 Ukrainian refugees, rightly so, uh, skipping violence, skip the line, and are now here in our city, in the city of Chicago. And that is one thing that we are proud of, being a welcoming city. What we cannot have is continue to see other states sending people, a federal government that blame us for it, and not criminalizing people for just trying to plead for violence. That is nonsense. The migrants that are now at risk are those adults that don't have kids and they need just as many Chicagoans help to create housing. We have in Chicago 80,000 vacant units. All right. developers and corporations that have it rather keep them empty that rent to black and brown people. That is the and, issue. And Alderman, so we know, Chicago, you know, you, you mentioned the, the buses coming. We know that those buses are not stopping. How concerned are city officials right now? Because there's something else happening. There's this measles outbreak, and now this eviction uh, has been pushed back by a day. But it's all happening at the same time. Absolutely. So that's what I think. And it's criminal, right? If we have a, a governor like Abbott that is uh, playing with literally, and he's done it again. Uh, we have already a, a three-year-old little girl that died in transit from Texas to Chicago. A five-year-old little boy had died because of the responsibility of governors that instead of collaborating, coordinate, coordinating efforts, like you said, in the break of the missiles uh, uh, outbreak, we need to have protocols at the border. I went with my colleagues to the border. I didn't see that. I see law enforcement. I see just the same here in Illinois, responding public health matters with law enforcement, inappropriate. What we need to make sure is invest in those protocols, have coordination instead of sabotaging each other. That is a shame that at federal level, we cannot still intervene to stop criminal mayors like Abbott and the danger of having criminals like Trump back in office. This is the time to act responsibly on the missiles outbreak with protocols and with housing so people can be 21 days in shelter in place. Work, yeah. Working for the people, who are we working for? Federal state governments must collaborate. We're doing everything we can. And yeah, and we'll certainly see uh, what happens once these evictions start up on Sunday. Chicago Alderman 
Byron Sigsho Lopez, thank you so much for your time. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.